Prelecha Shusham Purim to everybody. And we're still all hoping for the Yeshua that we need, so the Ebesha should send it to us immediately. We're very excited to mark Simchas for this week, the engagement of Hannah Pollinger to Yedidya Rabbeinu. Hannah's the daughter of our classmate Yuti. And the Bar Mitzvah of Menachem Mendel Wilhelm. Um, and his two bubbies are classmates, Devery Wilhelm and ZC Raskin. Mazel tov to them and mazel tov to anybody else that we don't know there are simchas and sh there should only be more and more simchas. Um, today's sicha, just a heads up, is not your mother's or your grandmother's or your elder bubby sicha. Um, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a little challenging for most of us, for sure, for me. Um, and I hope that we can just all lean into the fact that having committed to this project, we are taking on um, a whole a whole um, vista of different sikhas and, and learning in ways that we may not have previously. Seif Aleph. The Parsha Seinu, Mivor Din Chavite Kohen Gadol. So in our Parsha, among the many things that are discussed, is explained the offering, the pan offering, or the offering of the griddle cake. It was a flat mincha offering that the Kohen Gadol brought. And there's a discussion about hachiyuv hamutal ala Kohen Gadol lahavi mi beisai mi mimeinoi um, there is an obligation on the Kayin Gadol to bring from his assets, from his own money, this Korba Mincha every day, constantly. And he would bring half of this meal offering in the morning and half in the afternoon. Okay. And we find that there's a machlekes between tanoim regarding imeis koyin gadol, the loy minu acher tachtav. And there's a machlekes about what happens if the koyin gadol passes and a new koyin gadol was not yet appointed in his stead. And so, say the koyin gadol passes after having brought the morning mincha, um, but now who's going to bring? And from whose assets are going to be brought is going to be brought the afternoon part of this mincha. Michel Mihaisa Minchas Koyengodal Kreva. Who was responsible to bring the mincha of the Koyengodal after the Koyengodal passed away? Rabbi Shimon Aimesh Mivin Aisai Mimaman Hatzibor, Michel Tzibor. Rabbi Shimon opines that the offering for the Koyengodal was brought from the assets, from the money that belonged to the tzibor, to the community. Rabbi Yehuda pines that it was the ears, it was the children, the family of the Kohen Gadol, who brought the Korban Mincha, until another Kohen Gadol was uh, appointed in the stead of the first Kayin Gadol. Okay, so again, Rabbi Shimon says, you take the money for this mincha from the tzibor, and Rabbi Yehuda says, no, you take it from Michel Yarshin. You take it from the family, the ears. Okay, Obi Gemara, and the Gemara Menachos over there, Huva Braisa Shabam Mivor Tamamachlekes. So the Gemara brings down a brisa, which explains the reason for this machlekes. Rabbi Yehuda Darishas Hakasov v'Hakayin Hamashiach Tachtav Mibanav Yasa Aisa. So if you have a chumash in front of you, it will be helpful. Herek Vav Pasuk Tes Vav. So in Pasuk Tes Vav it says. Again, Perak Vav, Pasuk Tazvav, it says, Vahakoyen HaMashiach, it is the anointed priest, 
Tachtov mi banav yaasa oisa. So it is the anointed priest of Aaron's sons who succeeds him, who shall offer it. Chok Eilam, this is an everlasting statute, La Hashem, before the eternal. Kolil Toktar, it shall be completely burnt. Okay. So we're going to explain this puzzle. We're going to explain the Rashi. But first, we're going to look into the Gemara. So the Gemara says, based on this Pasuk, Rabbi Yehuda Dayush is a Kosova Koin HaMashiach Tachta Mibanav Yasa Isa. In his place, from among his sons, shall perform it. Dahachi Mashma, this means, HaKoin HaMashiach Kishem Meis Tachta. When the, when the Kohen that was anointed as a Kohen Gadol dies, then instead of him, one of his sons, his ears, his family, should bring this karban. Rabbi Shimon lo yimid min kasov, but Rabbi Shimon learns from this kasov the words chok oilam, an everlasting statutes. What does this mean? So oilam could refer to time, meaning forever. And Eilam could refer to community, like the world. Like we in Yiddish, you have an expression, the Eilam Zak, the world says. So Rabbi Shimon learns from the word Eilam here that it's Michel Eilam, that who brings the carbon instead of the Kayan Gadol? It's brought from the world. It's brought from the community. Michel Tzibor, it's brought from the, from the communal Mitruma Salishka, from the money that would go into the communal treasury with which were brought the carbonites that were brought every single day in the in the mikdash. Now, the Rebbe says miloshen ha mishnah, from the verbiage in the original mishnah that we started with, which is michel mihei sakreva, who from whose money would this carbon be brought? Val derech zem miloshen shnei atanoim bidivrehem, and in like fashion, from the verbiage of the two tanoim, mashma. It's understood. Shechiyuv ha hakrava midaraisa kishaloi minu achar tachtav ene chiyuv ifne atzmai. That this obligation that's being discussed in the Torah about who and from which money would be brought this korban when there was not yet a new kain gadol is not an uh, independent obligation. It's not a new mitzvah. It's not chiyuv nifrat mehakrabas hachavitin alidea koygad al atzmai. It's not a new obligation separate and apart from this korban that was brought, the chavitin, by the koyen gadol. Hainu shahatay achit shachiyuv hakrabas chavitin noisav kishemeis koyen gadol. This would mean that the Torah offered or gave us a novel obligation about offering this korban called the chavitin when the kain gadol dies. No. Rebbe says, Ela zehu hemshech v'aisei sug d'chiyuv ha-krava shal kain gadol atzmai. No, this is a continuation. It's part of the same category of the obligation for the kain gadol to bring a chavitin every single day. It's not a new mitzvah. Va'al pizei yesh lo'imar. So once we understand that what we're discussing now is not a new obligation, but rather it's a continuation of the obligation that the Kohen Gadol has. So then we understand, va'al pizei yesh lo'imar, and based on this we could say, sh'ha'plukta bedrashas ha'ksuvim k'shura l'machleikes b'teich na'ishol korban chavite Kohen Gadol, gam k'sha Kohen Gadol atzmai makrivai. Then we understand that the difference in opinion regarding this pasuk and regarding who brings it and from whose resources is brought the chavitin after the kain gadol passes before a new kain gadol is uh, anointed is not separate and apart from the inion of the korban in general. In other words, there's something about the chavite kain gadol when he himself would bring it that needs to be clarified. What kind of korban was this? And once we understand that, we have a better understanding of the machlekes that surrounds this when the kain gadol passes.
In other words, this whole discussion about who would bring it and from whose resources it would be brought only highlights that the korban itself needs to be understood. There's something about this korban that is still amorphous, that is unclear to us as to what kind of korban this was. And the Rebbe explains in Se'iv Beis, Begeder chavite koin godol, afal pi when it comes to the category of this particular korban called the chavite koyen gadol, although it's brought from his own money, his own personal assets, and although it's called chavite koyen gadol, so it's attributed to his name, to him personally, yesh lachkar, but there's, it still needs to be understood. There is still what to investigate. Im heim begeder korban yachid mamash. Is this actually a korban yachid? Does this fall in the category of a personal korban? Oi, sheheim ke'ein korban sibor. Or is this chavite kohen gadol, this particular korban, in the category of a korban sibor? And we might say, that we have to look at the reason for why this carbon was brought. And by looking at why this carbon was brought, we'll be able to determine is this a personal carbon or is this more of a communal carbon? Now, let's remember that we're talking about a meal offering. A mincha is a meal offering brought from flour with oil and some frankincense, which I'm guessing is a kind of, um, I don't know, spices um, that were added to it. But it was not an animal, it was not a bird. It was, uh, Karba Mincha was considered the, you know, the, the, the poorest category of offering. Okay, so now let's look at the reasons that the Mephorshim give us for this particular Karba. Hachinuch Mivair. The Sefer HaChinuch, which is dedicated to giving us the reasons for mitzvahs in general, explains, Mishor Sheha Mitzvah, what's the root of this mitzvah? Lafi Shakayin Gadol Hu HaShaliach Bein Yisrael Avim Sheva Shemayim. Because the Kayin Gadol is the emissary of Bnei Yisrael to their father in heaven, Kalamai, that is to say, Ki Hu HaNaisi Tfila Elav Adam, because he's the one that carries their prayers for them. And it is through the Kayin Gadol's prayers and through his offerings that Bnei Yisrael uh, arrive at atonement. The Lachain, <clears throat> therefore, and so because he has this distinctive position of bringing the tefillahs of Bnei Yisrael to Hashem, therefore his tefillahs and his offerings are distinctive, and therefore it is proper that such a person should have a special korban that he brings constantly, like the tmide hatzibor, just like the Karbanais Tomid that were brought for the for the collective. And through this, and on account of this, he will help them. He will help himself. He will help them. And, and his tefillahs will be efficacious. So Lufi has Brazenimsa. So in according with this explanation offered by the Sefer Chinuch, we find Sheminchas Hachavitin Tomid Shalakoyin Gadol that this offering the Mincha Chavitin that was brought constantly by the Kayin Gadol, he bishvil kaporas hatzibor. It's for the atonement of the collective, of the congregation. Al derech tzmidi hatzibor. It is very similar to the karban, karbanais sibor, the karbanais tamid that were brought in the morning and in the afternoon. Ubefrat, <clears throat> and this is especially so, because Chavite Kain Gadol Kraven Yacharim Karbanatamit. Because when did the, the Kain Gadol bring up this particular carbon? He brought it up at the same time that the carbon tamid was brought up on behalf of B'nai Yisrael. 
That's according to the Sefer HaChinuch. Omna medivri kama v'kama mefarshim. But if you look at the explanations of other commentators, mashma umuvan, it's understood, shedatam hi, shezehu rak korbonai shalakayin gadol atzmai, bituras yachid. They opine differently that this korbon chavitin, that this minchas chavitin, was for him and him alone. It was a personal korban for the Kayin Gadol. The Chayim Muvan, Mikamo Kamam Me'ataimim, Shenemru Aydei Mefor Sheita Me'amitzvah. And it is likewise understood when you look at the reasons that were set forth by those Mefarshim that specialize in explaining mitzvahs. Lidugma Habarbanel. For instance, the Barbanel. Hevi kama v'kama timeim. The Barbanel brings about nine different reasons for this particular offering. Umehem, and among those reasons, the Barbanel says one one of the reasons he brings down is kedei lahachnis lefne Hashem ba'anava ubesimone dalos ka'ani ve'evion hanitzav lefne adon kala aretz. That one of the reasons that the Kain Gadol brought this, was in order to come before Hashem with humility, with the signs of poverty, like a poor man, like an indigent man, like a pauper, who stands before the master of the entire world. Sheratza Hashem, shebechol yoyim, you crave him lefun of korban yachid v'korban. So that's, I'm sorry, so that's one reason that the Karba Mincha was meant to evoke by the Kahin Gadol this sense of being impoverished, this humility. Another reason that the Barbanel brings down is Sharatza Hashem, Shabachol Yoim, Yu Kravim Lefun of Karban Yachid, the Karban Tzibor. Hashem wanted that every day this should be brought before him both a Karban Tzibor and a Karban Yachid a carbon on behalf of the collective and a carbon on behalf of the individual. Derech klal v'derech prat. A carbon that was in an all-inclusive category and a carbon that celebrates the specificity. So klal uprat. Val pizeh yesh leimar. So based on this, we would say so we might say that the argument surrounding who brought the carbon chavite when a kayin gadol passed, and from whose resources was it taken, tluya hanal. So that argument depends on the two categories of explanations for why this carbon was brought to begin with. If you go according to the explanation that the carbon that the Kayin Gadol brought, the, the, the carbon, the Chavite Kayin Gadol, was a type of carbon Sibor, like, for instance, the Chinuch teaches, then it makes sense that when the Kayin Gadol is not alive, until another Kayin Gadol is appointed, this korban would be brought from the Tzibor. It would be brought from the money of the Tzibor. But if you go according to the opinion that this was a personal korban, it's not a korban Tzibor, but rather he brought it up as an individual. So if the Kayin Gadol passed, then his, his ears have to bring the carbon. They have to bring it from their resources because they have to do it for their father. They have to do it for their brother. They have to do it for their grandfather because it was a personal thing. Gimel. now. So based on the above, understanding that the Machlekes would be rooted 
in understanding the nature of this carbon to begin with, even when the Kayan Gadol was alive, what was the nature of this Kayan? So Alpia now, based on the above, Shalashitas Rabbi Yehuda Tam Shatzar Lavio Michel Yarshim Nesha Korban Shayach LeKayin Gadol Atzmai. Now that we understand that the two opinions are based in understanding the nature, now uh, the nature of the of the of the carbon to begin with. Now let's look more closely to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion that says that the Yarshim, the ears, have to bring it because the carbon is a personal carbon. So based on this, Yuvan Loshan Harambam now. We're in a position to understand the particular terminology, the particular verbiage that the Rambam brings when he treats this halacha. Pasak Harambam. The Rambam says, the Rambam Paskind, Meis Kayangodal Bashachris, Acha Shehikriv Hatsi Hayisaran. If a Kayan Gadal passes, in the morning, after he brought half of this korban that he had to bring, and they did not yet appoint another kahin, so the yarshim, his ears bring a complete isarin, that's a certain amount of flour, but here's the distinctive thing. That the Rambam says they bring it avor kaparasai, they bring it for his atonement. Olechayra ain't a move on, and seemingly this is not understood. Mahu teichen heisafazu shehayor shemivim es hakorban avor kaparasai. What is going on here? What 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 is the Rambam trying to tell us here? This is a new thing that the ears bring the korban in order to atone for him. Uma mikor shel harambam lakach. And what is the Rambam's source for this? Seemingly additional new piece of information that the ears bring it to atone for the kohen god. El habir bazehu. But the Rebbe says, but the explanation is as follows. Kavanas harambam he. What the Rambam intends to do here is l'rameiz baze es hatam mipnei ma hadin hu shemivin hayoshin. He wants to allude to the reason for why the yarshin bring it, and you don't bring it from the assets of the tzibur. Ve'ini neisav baze delechayer. And 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 there there's an additional Indian here because seemingly mikach shereb Yehuda shina miloshana kasev mi banav yaasa oisa because this goes back to what Rabbi Yehuda opined. Rabbi Yehuda changed the terminology. The pasuk says mi banav yaasa oisa that this carbon should be brought by his sons, but Rabbi Yehuda va'amar yorshin. But he said. His ears move on. She ain't kavanase dafka lebonim scharim. So by introducing that his ears can bring it rather than his son, it opens up the possibility to this being not only dafka his sons. She ain't begedra havas minchas chavitin. Because the sons would, we would naturally understand that they are in the category of bringing this carbon and others. It need not be said, it need not be stated, it's self understood that this would apply to one of his sons who could become the next Kohen Gadol, who will be his Mimali Makai, and he will be. Um, a point to become Kayan Gadol. And because he is in a position to be appointed as a Kayan Gadol, so he is already a Kayan Gadol in potentia. So this, we don't even have to state that obviously this kind of person could bring the carbon Chavitin. Because 
and even those sons that will always remain just kohanim, pedestrian kohanim, they will never become a kohen gadol, but they too are in the category of being able to bring this korban because this is a korban that every kohen had to bring on the day that they were initiated into the kohuna. But what is the chidosh here of the Rambam based on the change that Rabbi Yehuda made? But the Chiddush is that even if the Kayan Gadol didn't have any sons, the Yarsh of Him Banais and the, those that are his ears, are our daughters, Alehen Lahavi as Minchas Hachavitin. They have to bring the Minchas Chavitin. And this requires uh, study. Where does Rabbi Yehuda? find uh, this precedent. In other words, what is he basing this novelty on? Shagam hayorshim stam, the gam bonis bechlal, that it could be any heirs. It could be a brother. It could be, in other words, any next of kin, inclusive of daughters. Chayavim lahavi karban zeh, v'loi rakim meforish bepasuk banav. In other words, what does um, what does Rabbi Yehuda base his his uh, bold and novel statement on when the pasuk itself says "bun of sons," and he changes it to "yorshin," which opens up the possibility to others, including women, his daughters. Um, Tipa asked, "Is this the only time that a woman brings a korban?" Um, I I think not. I think that there were other times when women brought karbanes, uh, karban chatas, uh, karban taida, um, the karban that was brought after birth. Um, I, I believe that there were other times. Um, could be a discussion about whose resources she is using. Um, so this could be a novel thing here. In other words, that she's she's the, she inherits. So it's like. She is she's bringing it from her resources, as it were, it seems, Mashma. Um, but but the but the question here is where does Rabbi Yehuda get this premise from? Um, Rambam. So the Rambam brings a teretz, is explaining this question. That you have to understand that when this korban is brought by the Yorshim. It's not that they're bringing something in their behalf, Ella, but rather avor kaparasoi. They're bringing it for the atonement of the kohen gadol. Masha hayorshim mivim es hakorban hareze avor kaparasoi shel hamoyrish. The fact that the inheritors, if that's a word, the ears, are bringing the korban, that is in behalf of the person from whom they inherited. Because this korban was about a kapara for the kohen gadol. And therefore, ain't a begedesh korban shalahem. Therefore, it's not considered a korban that's in the category of their korban. Elazehu korban shalham moirish. This is a korban that is actually brought from the one from whom they inherit. In other words, he's no longer alive, but they are his proxy. And so they bring it as a proxy for their father. Dalit. So, based on what we've explained so far about this Korban called the Chavite Kain Gadol. Shehim begeder kein korban sibor. The Efsher Gam Loimar Shehim korban yochet shalak Kain Gadol. That there's there's a um, amorphous quality about this korban. You could see it as being a korban sibor, but it could also be understood as a korban yochet of the Kain Gadol. Yuvan Gam Perish Rashi Ala Pasuk Bahakoyin Hamashiach Takta of Mibon of Yasa Isa Kalil Takta. Now we're going to go back to the Pasuk 
and we're going to be able to understand what Rashi is doing with his explanation on this puzzle. So it will be really hard to do without a homish. Um, so we're going back to Pasuk Tesvav in Pasuk Vav. In Perik Vav, sorry. Pasuk Tesvav in Perik Vav. And again, the Pasuk reads, V'hakoyin HaMashiach, Tachtav Mibonav, it is the anointed priest of Aaron's sons who succeeds him, Ya'asa Oisei, who will offer this korban, Chok Oilem Hashem. It is an everlasting statute before Hashem. Kolil Toktor. It shall be completely burnt up. Now let's look at Rashi. Rashi says, Hamashiach Taktav Mi Banav. How should this be understood? As Hamashiach Mi Banav, the anointed one of his sons, Taktav, who succeeds him. So this is not the only place where Rashi explains how a Pasuk has to be read. And in order to read it properly, to understand it properly, you have to rearrange the order of the words. Okay? So that's what Rashi does there. And then Kolil Taktar, on those words that should be completely burnt up, Rashi says, Ein Nikmetes, it does not have a koimet removed. It does not have three fingers, a certain amount removed. She, she yareha, she yareha nechalin, so that the remaining parts may be eaten. Ella kula kalil, but you don't do koimets. It's completely burnt up. The chain kol minchas koyen shal nadava kalil tihia. And similarly, any priest's uh, offering, a korban nadava, brought up like a free will offering just because is completely burnt up. Okay. So now let's go back into the Sikha. Rashi Maitik as Atevis Hamashiach Tachdav Mibanov Umifarish Hamashiach Mibanov Tachdav Vaachakach and afterwards Matik Rashi Kolil Tachtar Umifarish A Nikmetis Kmitza is not performed Liyashiareha Necholin in order for the rest of it to be eaten by the person who brings the carbon, the whole thing is burnt. And in Rashi's first comment, it's not understood, like the commentators on Rashi, the super commentaries on Rashi point out, what is Rashi trying to teach here? It seems that he has simply rearranged the words as they appear in the Pasuk. But but what changed or what was added in how we understand this Pasuk through Rashi rearranging the order of the words? That's in the first part of Rashi. And there's also a difficulty with the second comment. Ma mechadesh kan Rashi. Again, what is Rashi telling us that is novel and new? Pashtus halashon halil taktar. The simple explanation of those words. Einla ella pirish echad. It only has one definition. It only has one explanation, and that is. Shemak tirin es kula al gabem is beach, that you completely consume all of what is offered on top of them is beach, but ain nisha dover lachila, and nothing remains to be eaten. So, so what, what did Rashi, what was Rashi Mechadish here that we don't already know? Yes, sir, Al Kain. But more difficult, and, and what the Rebbe points out here is, is so fascinating, more difficult than this is. Rashi atzmai nakat le'il lashon tzu. So please look at Pasuk Zayin in the same parak, parak vav. So we're going back a little bit. The Pasuk Zayin in parak vav reads, V'zayis teres ha-mincha, 
and this is the law of the meal offering, that one of Aaron's sons would bring Lefnei Hashem al Pnei HaMizbeach. And look at Rashi, Bezais Teres HaMincha. Torah Achas Lekulan. One law applies to all meal offerings, to all minchas. And what was that? Laat Inon Shemen Ulevaina. That they all need oil and frankincense. Hamurim Be'inyan, as is stated in here in this section. Sheyachal, I might have thought, Ainly to Unai Shemen Ulevaina, Ela Minchas Yisrael Shehinik Metis. I might have thought that it's only the mincha that a Yisrael bring from which a kaimitz is separated that requires oil and requires frankincense. Minchas kaihanim. Shehi kolil minayim. But a, but a meal offering that a kayim brings that's completely consumed on the mizbeach, that's completely burnt on the mizbeach, from where do I learn that it needs oil and it needs the frankincense, the levaina, Talmud Laimer Tairas? You learn it from this word. But what the Rebbe points out here is that Rashi uses the word kalil, the loy haisiv bir bazeh. He casually uses the word kalil, shehi kalil, when he, when he explains what the word Tairas Hamincha means here. The loy haisiv bir bazeh. And he doesn't feel compelled to explain it. So that means that he feels that the term kalil is self-understood. Rashi seems to be signaling that the word kalil needs no further explanation. So why later in Perak Tezvav does Rashi spill so much ink explaining that you don't take a kaimitz from the kain gadol's mincha in order for um, the rest of it, the, the remaining part to be eaten, but rather it's completely consumed. And then there's more. And there's yet more. Lahalon ala pasuk shala akreze. So now go to pasuk tezayin in our parag vav, where it says v'chol minchas koyhein. Similarly, any mincha offering of a koyhein of any priest, kolil tia shall be completely burnt up. Loi teachel it shouldn't be eaten. And here. Perish Rashi es hateva kolil kula shave ligvoiha. Rashi says it means it's all equally for lagavoiha for Hashem. It's all equally for the Most High. Vitamua biyaser, and this is a really big wonder. Betchila nakat Rashi es aloshen kolil lelay kol perish bazet. First, Rashi introduces the term kolil and doesn't give us any explanation. It's as if this is a perfectly familiar term in our vocabulary that we all use all the time. He doesn't have to explain anything. Then in Pasuk Tezvav, he explains that kalil means that you don't take a koimitz and that it's completely consumed. Nobody eats the remaining. And then only after all of this does he actually go back to define the word kalil and he says it's all equally set aside gavoya for Hashem. What is going on here? What 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 does the word kalil mean? Hey. And we might say the explanation is as follows. We can only understand what Rashi explains after we understand what question is bothering Rashi. And very often that's not uh, that's not readily understood. 
So the Rebbe is explaining that the question that's bothering Rashi is Shinui Haloshin bin Shnei HaPsukim, that there is a difference in terminology between the two Psukim. The Pasuk Harishain in Pasuk Tezvav. Hamidabel Minchas HaKoyen HaMashiach, that is talking about the anointed Koyen, meaning the Koyen Gadol, Nemar, Kalil Toktar. It says there the words Kalil Toktar. It should be completely burnt up. Ube Pasuk Hasheni Hamidaber Al Vechol Minchas Koyen, but in Pasuk Tesvav, that's talking about any offering of a Koyen, Nemar, Kalil yeah, it says it should be completely burnt up, but it doesn't say toktor. Toktor means like going up in smoke. We understand that kalil means completely consumed, but it doesn't add the word toktor. Instead, it says tihiyah. Umishinu izeh ben apsukim diek rashi. So it's from this difference in wording that Rashi specifies She'eluhim shnei in yanim va'ifanim nifradim becholil that the pas the two psukim are talking about two different concepts in the larger category of kolil the davar zemudga shemavor barichas lashon Rashi and this is underscored and explained. In the elongated uh, mefarish, in the elongated um, terminology that Rashi uses, on pasuk tesvab, on the words al kolil toktor perish Rashi, Rashi explains there a nikmetzes. You don't take the kaimets off liyais sheyareha necholin ella kula kolil. You don't take off one part and put it on the carbon, and the rest, the remaining, is eaten by the Baal, but rather it's entirely offered on the Mizbeach. Ba'arichus l'shoinai, and in and in the in, in spending so much time explaining the word kolil through his elongated explanation, ba Rashi lahaver es kavanosai. Rashi comes to explain what he wants to teach, what is his intention to teach us here. Shekalil toktar eina ba lishlalas inya kamitza. That the word kalil toktar does not come to aviate the necessity to take off the koimets. Ha mincha teuna kamitza. This offering does in fact need kamitza. But this is a type of kamitza where whatever is not taken off is also not eaten by others. But whatever is not, whatever remains from the from the kaimets is also brought up on the mizbeach. Kaimets care of laatzmai, vishirayim craven laatzmai. The kaimetz was offered by itself, and then whatever remained of the mincha was offered by itself. Vizehu perish kolil toktar. Shahakol, beina kaimetz, beina shrayim, muktar al gabe hamizbeach. So Rashi is teaching that that's what the word kolil toktar means, that all of it was offered. Despite the fact that you took off a kaimetz, it wasn't that only the kaimetz was offered, but rather the kaimetz was offered individually, and the rest, the shirayim, the remaining portion, was also offered. It was not consumed by anybody. But in Pasuk Tezayin, the term kolil tihiyah, ha'amor b'shenis, that is said in the second Pasuk, gabe v'chol minchas koyin, and this is regarding every korba mincha that a koyin brought, perushai, the explanation for that is hula shava lagoiva, meaning min chazu ein ba his chalkos lekoimetz l'shrayim. In this carbon, there is no koimetz taken off. All of it is for Hashem. Ela kula mukteres b'shava lekaboya. 
all of it is offered equally to Hashem. The ein ba kmitza klal. There is no kmitza taken off. There's no kaimet. Kolil tia he nisheres kolil bahavisa. It is essentially a unified korban. It shall kolil tia. It shall be an entirety. Thanks a million times to the um, amazing resource called Chayenu, I'm able to share with you, and if you have the Chayenu in front of you, you could look on page 17 of footnote 46. Rashi is pointing out in the second, in Pasuk Tezayin, that the term Kalil is not derived from the root Kala, meaning consumed, for if so, it would not necessarily indicate that an entire offering is burnt, but merely that what is to be burnt is to be completely consumed. Rather, the word is derived from the word klal and means its entirety, meaning it is all to be equally for Hashem and all burnt on the altar, not just the kaimets. And thus Rashi is elaborating on his previous comment. Vav. My time at the Zeshebe Minchas Kayan Gadol Minchas Kayan Stam. And what is the difference between the Mincha of the Kayan Gadol, which was all consumed on the on the carb on the Mizbeach, but there was a Kaimitz taken off, so that Kaimitz was consumed separately, was burned separately from the rest, and the Mincha of the Kayan Stam that is completely consumed without a Kaimitz being taken off. Alpihanal, based on what we learned above in Siv Beis, Hadavar Muvam Bipashtos. Now this is understood simply. Rashi Noiket Bipshutai Shel Mikra. Rashi is citing, Rashi wants to show us in the Pshutai Shel Mikra, Shechavite Kaingadal Haboim, Tomid Becholyam, Enam Begeder Korban Yachid. Rashi wants to show us that the Chavite Kayin Gadol, that was brought up, Tamid, constantly, it was brought up every day, but although it was brought every day, but it was not in the core, it was not a Korban that was brought up as a Yochid, as a individual. Ba'isa Hasuk Shal Minchas Kayin Stam. That would be in the same category as the mincha that a regular kohen got. But what would be different? The only difference would be that he's a kohen gadol and those people are kohenim stam. No, Rashi wants to obviate that. He wants to say, But rather, when the kohen gadol brings this karba mincha, he's bringing it, as a shliach of Klal Yisrael, al derach korban hatamid, ke'ein korban sibor. So in other words, what would be the difference? One way of understanding korban tamid is that it's brought up constantly, but it could still be in the gedder, in the category of a yachid. But Rashi saying, no, it's brought for the klal, and it's brought al derech korban hatamid. There was a korban tamid that was born in the morning, a korban tamid that was born in the afternoon, and this too is another korban that was brought by the kain gadol ke'ain korban sibor, as another sort of korban sibor. Va'al pizem muvan hatam sheperish Rashi shechavite kain gadol to unin kmitza, and now we can understand why Rashi explains that the Kayin Gadol's Karban Mincha did need a Kaimetz taken off of it. Ki ein heim begeder minchas Kayin. Because different from the Karban that's being discussed in Pasuk Tez Zayin, the Kayin of a, the, the Karban, the Karban Mincha of a regular Kayin that did not need Kamitza, the Kayin Gadol's Karban Mincha was different. Ella al derech minchas tibor. It's not a korban yachid. It's a korban tibor. It's not a minchas yachid. It's a minchas tibor. Umemela, and therefore, they need 
Kmitza. It needs Kmitza to be taken off of it. Kechol shar hamenachais hakreves al gabe hamizbeach, like all the other menachais that were brought on the mizbeach. Ella shakevon shamincha mukreves bepoil al yidei kain gadol. But since practically it was brought by the kain gadol, yesh leminchazu gam his damos vishtabos leminchas koyhein. It is also similar, and it can also be compared to the mincha of a regular kayin. And, and what's the comparison? That its remainders were not eaten by anybody. So the chidush of the minchas chavitin of the kayin gadol was that on one hand, kmitza was taken, but on the other hand, the shirayim, the remainders, were not eaten by anybody. They were also consumed on the on the on the um Mizbeach. O Mahai Taima. And for this reason, Af Hakt Af Hikdim Rashi Be Perusha Bitchilas Akasov, the Hakoyin Hamashiach Tahtav Mi Banov, the Shino O Perish Hamashiach Mi Banov Tahtav. And now the Rebbe says, once we understand what Rashi is teaching us in the second comment on Pasu Tezvav, now we're in a position to understand what he did in the first comment. It seems that he's just changing around the wording. But of course, this, this changing around the wording is to make note of something profound. Kavanas Rashi Bekahi, what is Rashi's intention? in rearranging the order of the words. His intention is lish loyal bipshute shel mikra es pirusha shel rabbi Yehuda, is to aviate in the pshute shel mikra rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Lefi perish rabbi Yehuda nimza. what did rabbi Yehuda pine? Shemi banov omemela gam takdav loy koi al mashiach. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it would mean, how do you read this pasuk, that the words banav and even the word tachtav doesn't apply to the word mashiach, the anointed one. Ela al yaase. It should be applied to the word yaase, that this carbon should be brought by. Uperish hakasuf hukinal. And so then you would explain this pasuk, vahakoyin hamashiach, when the anointed koyin, meaning the koyin gadol, Immes, if he dies, azai tachtav mi banav yasa asa, then the son who is anointed in his place should bring the korban. Banav mi vin as korban amincha tachtav. The aval pi, and even though shapir zehu lachayr rachak mi pashtas akasov, and although you might say that this is far from the pshat of the pasuk. The Chalzais, Hayam Makam Leimar, but still in all, there were there's there's room to say, Shabazesh Shenakat Hakasuf Besedaze, that the fact that the pasuk presents the words in this order, B'Makayim Mibanav Tachtav, instead of saying from his son, instead of him, it says in his place Tachtav Mibanav from among his sons. You would say that the kavana of this pasuk is to allude to an additional din on top of the plain halacha. You would simply think that the pasuk is telling us, because this is the pshat, that the next kain gadol, that isn't pointed after the Kayin Gadol that dies has to bring this korban called the Chavit Kayin Gadol. And you would say that because of how the words are ordered, there's an additional thing that the Pasuk is coming to teach us. That until which time there's a new Kayin Gadol, after the first Kayin Gadol dies, his sons bring the korban. And this is the day of Rabbi Yehuda. And Rashi shoylel perish ze bipshuta shel mikra. And Rashi comes to completely negate this, to obviate this understanding. Or mefarish, and he explains. What does he explain? Shetoichen hakasafu ki ilu nemar milichatchila. That the way that you should read this pasuk, this verse, is that 
as if it would be written, Hamashiach, the anointed one, Mibanov Tachtav, Leloi Hefset Bain, Mashiach Obey Mibanov. That would mean, they should, I read it wrong. There should be no pause. The, the word Mashiach and Mibanav are linked. Meaning, who could bring this? Only a son who will be the Kayin HaMashiach instead of him. But not just any son can bring it. He does, Rashi, he can now, because Rashi's opinion is, Shechavite Kayin Gadol, Boim Bitoras Kapora Al Klal Yisrael, that the, this particular Korban, the Chavite Kayin Gadol, came as atonement for Klal Yisrael, not for the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol may be Oisam Kishliach Shal Klal Yisrael, and the Kohen Gadol brings it as an emissary of Klal Yisrael. O Memela Ein Makayim Shabanav Shal Kohen Gadol Shemais Shem Einam Kohen Gadol Ve'Einam Shluchim Shal Klal Yisrael Yaviu Es Korban. And therefore, there is no place for sons of the Kohen Gadol that are not themselves Kohanim Gedalim and won't ever be a Kohen Gadol and are not emissaries of the of the collective to bring this Karban. And so therefore, Rashi is doing more than just rearranging the order of the words. He's changing the whole paradigm. He's saying that there could be no hefseg between the word Mashiach and the word Mibanav. It has to be Mashiach Mibanov. It has to be that only from those among his sons that could be himself an anointed one, that only he could bring it. Zion. Alpiha now, based on the above. Shemachlekes Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Shimon Tlui Bepukta Bigdera Shal Minchas Chavitin. Bigdera Shal Minchas Chavitin. That the Machlekes between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon depends on understanding the Geder, the category, the Minchas Chavitin. Gam Kishah Kohen Gadol Atzmei Makriva. When the Kohen Gadol is alive and we, he, when he's bringing it, their whole Machlekas about what happens when he passes, who brings it, is really rooted in what kind of Korban is this in the first place. And once we understand that that is the source of the Machlekas, we can explain another difference regarding the bringing up of this Chavitin. The Gemara Hukshu, the Gemara asks a question. Let's go back to the beginning. The Rebbe said, let's look at Pasuk Tezvav, please. The Rebbe said that the whole Machlekes was based on this Pasuk. And Rabbi Yehuda was basing it on the words Tachtaf mi of Yasa, that the Korban should be brought from his children. And Rabbi Shimon was basing it on the words Chok Oilam, that it should be brought from the Oilam, it should be brought from the Tibor, right? Remember that? So now the Rebbe says, in Zion, let's go back to that original Pukta and let's see what does the Gemara continue to say. The Gemara says, Rabbi Yehuda, Hai Chak Oilam, my Ovid What does he do with this phrase, Chak Oilam? We know what Rabbi Shimon says. Rabbi Shimon says that this carbon Chavitim, when the, when the Kohen Gadol passes, has to be brought from the Oilam, has to be brought from the resources of the Tibor, from the Truma Salishka. But what does Rabbi Yehuda do with these words? Ma'avid lay. How does this phrase serve him? Chuka la'ilam tehei. So the Gemara answers that this is an everlasting statute. That's how Rabbi Yehuda understands chak ilam. That this is an everlasting statute. What does this mean? Ubiara hataisvais. So the taisvais explains the Gemara and says, Tahavamina. I may have thought, I would have thought, Aaron Makriv Chavitin Bechol Yain. 
that Aaron brought the Chavitin every day, Ubanov and his sons, meaning the regular Kaihanim, Bishosh and Nasu Kaihanim Gedolim, they brought it when they became Kaihanim Gedolim. Afalpi Shekvar Nischanchu Bikuhunas Hedyait that they would bring it on the day that they become a Kohen Gadol, even though they already brought it when they became a Kohen Stam. In other words, the Teisvis explains that what Rabbi Yehuda learns from the word Chok Eilam is that this is a Korban that has to be brought constantly, not only as an initiation Korban, because you might have thought that yes, Aaron brought the carbon chavitin every day, but his sons would only bring it on the day that they became a Kayin Gadol. And what is the news flash in Pasuk Tezbav that although they already brought this carbon on the day that they became a regular Kayin, a Kayin Hedyate, they would also have to bring it as an initiation rite on the day that they became a Kayin Gadol. Va'al Kayin Yesarah Belimud Chukala Eilam Tehei. And therefore, what's the new thing that we're learning from the word Chak Eilam? What do we take away from it? That no, that this is not just an initiation carbon, that this is a carbon that would have to be brought every single day, forever, by every Kayin Gadol, not just by Aaron, the first Kayin Gadol, but by every Kayin Gadol. The Hesiko Atais Sham. And the Teisvus um, concludes there, Rabbi Shimon Leisle Hai Svara. And Rabbi Shimon does not agree with this opinion. Ulachaira. Seemingly, the Mai Svara Miflege. What are they arguing about? Im Hadavar Muvan Me Elov Shaminchas Chavitim Bab the Cholyam Gamle Dyers, Oisha Yisara Belimad Mi Yuchar Al Kach. It would seem that now that the argument is, if it's self-understood that the Chavitin has to be brought every single day by the Kohen Gadol, not just by Aaron, the first Kohen Gadol, but Lederis for every single generation, or that it's not self-understood and we needed to have a special limut. And this is understood Based on what we said above, because it's all going to depend on how you see this carbon chavitin. Again, is it a carbon tzibor or is it a carbon yachid? Because all the the constant avoides that were in the mikdash were all relevant to those that were brought for the tzibor. Why? Tzibor hu metzies tmidis v'nitzchis. Because a tzibor congregation is an entity that is constant and eternal. Keteichen hadin, like the halacha that says, tzibor loim meis. The congregation never dies. A person can pass, but the congregation never dies. V'lachem. Therefore, Ladas Rab Shimon Shahabita Kain Gadal Himaldera Karbon Sibor. So according to Rabbi Shimon, who opined the Chavita Kain Gadal wore Karbon Sibor, then Ain Sarah Balimud Miyucha Chat Sibo Yal Min Amin Khatamid who Gamla Dairis. Then according to him, you don't need to have a special limo to teach you that the mincha is ta- that when it says mincha tamid, it means also for the generation. Because this mincha, chavitin, was just like all the other karbanas tamid that were brought every single day. But if you're going, according to Rabbi Yehuda, if you're going to, according to the opinion that is a karban yachid, that this is a karban that belongs to the karban himself, to the kain gadol himself. And therefore, it's of the opinion that when he dies, it has to be brought from his children, etc., etc. So we don't have a precedent for a korban yachid that is brought constantly. According to Rabbi 
So in accordance with the opinion that it's a carbon yachid, then yes, then you need to have a different limud, a new limud to tell you that this is a chuk ilan. And that's what Rabbi Yehuda learns from the words chuk ilan. Ches. Al based on this, we might say, the difference between these two opinions, it's not just, did you need special words in the Torah and a special limit in the Gemara to know that this is something that had to be brought with But really, it's about addressing what category this carbon is in. Is it something eternal, constant, or not? Yesh loyma, we might say, shachiyuvim hatmidiyim shalat sibor, einam ba'ifin shabachol yom chol chiyuv acher chadash, ela zehu chiyuv echad tmidi shehu nimshach. Those obligations that are constant and that are on the tzibor, on the collective, are not an obligation that is new and different. It's one continuum. It's a continuous obligation. It parallels the fact that the tzibor itself is not considered a new tzibor every day. It's a continuum. And even though some people pass off, other people are born, but it's one continuation. It's not a new tzibor. It's not a new chiyuv. And so we apply this to the chavite koyin gadol. Lefi has baruch shehem al dera korban tzibor in accordance with the understanding that the chavite koyin gadol, although it was offered by the koyin gadol from his own assets, was considered a korban tzibor. Then chiyuv hakravasam ba'ifen shel mincha tamid then the obligation to bring it up is one constant obligation to bring up this minchas chavitin it begins on the day that the kohen gadol was initiated into his avoda and it continues every single day unabated like the Chiyuv of the Korban Tamit. But according to the opinion that the Minchas Chavitin was a Korban Yachid, it was a Korban brought from an individual. Um, but when you're talking about if it's a korban yachid, then you don't have this eternal quality, like you apply to a korban tzibor because a tzibor never, never dies. Then if it's a korban yachid, then every single day, it's a new chiyuv. It's its own chiyuv to bring up this chavitim. And if you understand it this way, then the chavit says, Al pizeh, tuvan gam, drashas hateris kahanim. Then we're going to be able to understand a medrash, ala pasuk, ze korban arim biyayim, himashach aisei mincha tamit. We'll be able to understand a medrash on this pasuk, v'zel and this is the exact words of the medrash. The medrash says, "Miyayim shenimshach," from the day that he is anointed, maybe asiras ha'efa ad elam, he brings a tenth of an efa forever. Oi, ena oimer biyayim himashach oisay, ella biyayim shenimshach maybe asiras ha'efa umafsik. Or the or the Medrash says, or maybe the Pasuk means that only on the day that he's anointed, he brings this and then he stops. Talmud Laimar, so the Torah teaches, Mincha Tamid, that it's constant. 
So now why does the Pasuk bring the word What am I going to gain from that? The Pasuk is saying So why does the Pasuk have to include from the day that he was anointed? It comes to teach us that from the day that he is anointed, he brings this forever. And seemingly, this medrash is not is not understood. Maybe What what's the novelty? If the pasuk would have said and that's all, they wouldn't have said We would have understood from the word that the kohen gadol has to bring this every single day, all the time. So what did we learn from the inclusion of the word well, Pianal, but based on what we, what the Rebbe taught us before he brought in this medrash about understanding the difference between if it's a carbon seabor, it's a carbon yachid, because if it's a carbon yachid, then it's a new chi of every single day. That what is the novel thing that the medrash is teaching us? It, it, it seems like the medrash is just basically just repeating and regurgitating something that is pretty much understood, self-understood. But now the Rebbe is teaching us how to read this Medrash. The Chiddush is, Shekol yoyim ad oylam nikra yoyim himashach oysay. That every day, forever, is, con- is called, is considered the day he was anointed. Kilaymar, that is to say, yoyim himashach oysay, that the day that he was anointed, that itself continues into perpetuity. Meaning, the excitement, the novelty of being anointed, the alighting into a new distinction and a new category, that continues ad oilam. And this is what is being added in this explanation on the category of what we would normally think Mincha Tamid means. Normally, we would think Mincha Tamid means he brings it up every day. But the Medrash is coming to teach, according to the Rebbe, that the newness of his becoming a Kayin Gadal is something that is present every single day. That, that, that we have to understand that the content of the continuation here of the constancy mean, constancy constancy means that every single day when he brings this korban, he should bring it with the excitement and the enthusiasm of it being the day that he was anointed for the first time. We might say, We might say that there is even a difference in halacha. According to this explanation of the words mincha tamid, that this means it had to be brought up as if this was the day that he was anointed, nimsa. Then we would then 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 it, that would mean that the halacha is shechavite kain god al hakraven bechol yom him begeda minchas chinuch biyom him mashachaisai that the chavite kain god that was brought up every day is likened onto the category of the chavite kain god that was brought on the day that it was initiated into the kuna kedayla umemela and therefore makim leimar there is place to say to paskin. That just like the Kayin Gadol was prohibited from doing any other Avoida until he brought this Minchas Chavitin with which he was initiating. The same thing is true every day. That it's prohibited. At least it's prohibited. 
Kodem she Yaakov is Minchas Chavitin, Hachavitin, to do any other Avoida before he brings the Minchas Chavitin. And the Rebbe finishes off by saying, Habir Hanal Begeda Mincha Tamid. This new explanation that the Rebbe excavated from the Medrash for us, this explanation, in, in compliance with the explanation that it's a Korban Yachid, so that the Korban Tamid means that he brings it up as if it was the day that he was anointed. And so every single day there's a new chiyuv because if it was brought up as a korban sibor, it's not. It's one continuation of one continued chiyuv. But if it's a korban yachid, then there's a new chiyuv. The Rebbe says that all of this, matim gam im abir parsha ha all of this dovetails with what the Alt Rebbe explains in the Torah, which is called the Hasidish Parsha, al Parsha Shavuaze. The Alt Rebbe explains in this Parsha, Rabbeinu Azaki Makshasham, Aloshan Akasa Biyoim Himashach Aisai. The Alt Rebbe asks a question on the words Biyoim Himashach Aisai. The Alt Rebbe says, The Lachaira, Hayyalai Laimar, Mi Yoim Himashach Aisai. It shouldn't have said Biyoim Himashach Aisai on the day that he was anointed. It should have said, from the day that he was anointed, because afterwards it says that this is something that has to be done constantly. So it should have said, from the day that he was anointed, he has to bring this korban tomid constantly. But it doesn't say that. It says, on the day that he's anointed. Omevar, the Altarab explains, that this is that this is the way the Torah is written that it says Biyayim Kedesh Ayideze Yia Bechol Yayim VeYayim Ad Olam Hilui Bechinas Umadregas Yayim Himashach Eisay. This is an order that through this it should be every single day into perpetuity forever the revelation of this special level. And um, I don't know if somebody can help me with the word bechina. I always struggle with the word bechina. Um, this, this this should be a revelation of this special level and overture that was present on the day that he was anointed. In other words, that you know, like 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 the um, the very famous thing that you bechol yom kachadoshim, right? That the Torah is supposed to be every day like new here. Al Rebbe is explaining that by the Torah saying even though it says mincha tamid, that it's coming to teach us that it should be brought in such a way that through this every single day, forever, there should be the revelation of the special level that was there on the day that he was anointed. O Messiah, and Al Rebbe concludes. Dahainu, this means ad oilam forever. That on one hand, it's a minchas tamid. It's always. And on the other hand, it's bechinas biyoim himashach oisai. It has to be new. I think there's so much to talk about here, this um, fusion of something that has to be constant and something that we have to be committed to on a, on a, on a ongoing basis with no interruption. And at the same time, it has to be with enthusiasm and with the novelty and with the passion and the urgency that comes from biyoim himashach aisai, and and that's a it's not an easy thing to maintain, because it's easy to get excited when something is new. There's a rush of excitement, and a rush of urgency, and a rush of a jolt that comes with something new, 
But the Alter Rebbe concludes there in, in the Krititeri says that that's what it says, Bekorban are mincha tamid. On the one hand, it means ad oilam forever. And at the same time, it should be with that same flavor or energy of the day that he was anointed. And this aligns with what was explained in the Nigla. That when the Pasuk says, the Medrash explains that it's every day you get the energy and the novelty of the day on which he was anointed. Um, I tried my best. I don't feel um, like I did the best job, however, and so I I do apologize. It was it was the best I could do. I did I did struggle with this. Um, I I think that I need to learn this a number um, many more times. I learned it a few times already. But I need to learn it many more times to be a hundred percent able to wrap my head around it and and repeat it. But I hope I was able to, in some way, help you learn it. Um, but yeah different kind, <laughs> not what we might have gravitated to on our own, definitely pushing us out of our comfort zone. Yeah, but the Rebbe did a good job. So you you did your best, you made the Kaylee, and we all 